How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Seth Julian, welcoming you to today's non-farm payrolls live trading event. Uh, we are going, we're expecting 300,000 today, not like last night, last month's blowout, 500 plus, 528, I believe it was, which was a terrific opportunity, by the way. Um, let me please see who can hear the, my voice, see the opening slide, and uh, with a little confirmation of, uh, of uh uh, participation will get underway straight away. All looks good to me. Anybody? Just in, in the question and answer area, whether you can see uh, see my see the opening uh, slide. All good, says Paul. A hey, conch, great. Yeah, all right, fine. That's good enough for me. Barbara, Brucey, Herb, Vivian, great. Okay, we got a good crowd here today. Let's get underway. Um, the only protocol I have in the room, as the regulars know, is that you are asked to participate um, via the chat area so that we can um, have more of a dialogue rather than a coma-inducing monologue. What is the non-farm payroll report? It is simply a total of the number of jobs added to or subtracted from the U.S. economy over the last month, net of farm workers, hence the idiotic name. Now, why is it important? It provides an important indicator of the health of the world's largest economy. And these days in particular, and I'm saying these days, I mean from Q, the end of Q1 2020 until today, the world's largest economy is also the world's healthiest. It has become the, the uh, engine of uh, all, practically or literally all economic growth and, and, uh, and uh, health. Europe, Europe is on its knees. China is, is, is even below its knees. China is on its back with this silly uh, zero tolerance policy. So the U.S. economy, the Japanese economy is chugging, chugging along well, but mostly in support of and, and supplying the U.S. economy. So why is it important? Oh, we talked about that. Oh, it's also the most widely followed event on the monthly economic calendar, bar none. And these days, again, in particular. Um, and why is that so? By the way, let me just digress a bit and say it's a great trade. It's a great opportunity. Um, the opportunities that are posed by the non-farm payroll event are really good as a rule. And I want to state, I want to state quite clearly and unequivocally that there's risk here. The risk is that um, the, well, I'll get to some more. What are the effects of the outcome? The result is equal to, approximately equal to or greater than the expectation. The U.S. dollar is likely going to gain strength. Notice the red, underlined, italic, bold, likely. And the result, if the result is less than expected, expected, then the U.S. dollar is likely to weaken. Likely, okay? Let's digress a bit in here and talk about the risk that is prevalent in all capital market activities, no less so the uh, non-farm payroll report. We're going to talk about in a minute, you know, what the outcomes are in the textbook ex expectations and so on and so forth. However, I need you to be aware of a couple of possibilities that not only exist but occur from time to time. The first one is that um, well, let's, well, yeah, let, but for the likely one that, that we're expecting, we're going to talk about in depth. So I'm going to skip that in a moment. The unlikely ones that do occur now and again are as follows. Report comes out as expected, and the market uh, reacts in the opposite way. It's not happened once. It's happened many times. We have to be aware of that for reasons I don't know or understand and certainly couldn't, it didn't, don't trade. I never trade if I don't understand what's going on. A second outcome is the results come out, however they as they as however they come out would be a greater than expected or less than expected, and the market reacts in the opposite way. That happens too. Again, I don't get involved in those trades because I don't understand them. And a third uh, uh, possibility, and this hasn't happened in years, but I do mention it uh, in the interest of full disclosure, is that nothing happens. Report comes out. Um, in the event, certainly that it comes out in black as opposed to red or green nothing happens that that's expected but sometimes it comes out better than or worse than and still nothing happens a possibility finally a, a general caveat general risk that appears in in all live trading events is and this hasn't happened certainly on, on our platform in many many years but I, I do make you aware of it is that things get jammed up um you know when, when things get really pressurized and there's a huge demand and a giant surge in activity you'll see that the servers get slow it hasn't happened on the Alvexo platform in many, many years, but that's that. Now, how can we, we ex ex exploit these results? 
We wait to see what the true market reaction to the outcome is, not the knee-jerk reaction. We trade along with a trend that can stay in train for a few minutes to several days or more. And that happens, that has happened last month. It happens remarkably frequently in the last two years. And um, even though it's expensive to hold these positions over the weekend, it still pays. And I'll show you an example of that from a few years back, but it's still relevant. One could trade six currency pairs during the event, which we do. We look at six, the majors, uh, Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen dollar, Swiss dollar, CAD. Uh, and so let's look at a set, uh, potential setup on the trading platform. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you come away with one thing from today's session, I want you to uh, understand this graph, this, this slide. If you don't, you're likely to mis-execute. And, and, and let me say uh, that one of the big risks in trading a live event is mis-execution. And I don't want you to think that I'm above it. I'm not. It happens to all of us now and then, more or less frequency. Live trading events are very exciting. They're fun. They're they're, they're often they're very profitable, and as a result, you know you get you get you get jumpy and you miss execute. We don't want that to happen. So, need you to understand this slide. If the outcome is positive, that means it's better than expected. Today we're expecting, I believe, the number is 380. The whisper number is two two two. two excuse me. The, the general consensus is 300. The whisper number is 280. Uh, that's you get the idea. That's the neighborhood. By the way, last month it was 520 or something. I'll show you the real numbers in a minute. Anyway, the point's like this, and you need to understand this. If it comes out positive, the dollar on the right pairs are going to go down, and the dollar on the left pairs are going to go up. That's because these are ratios. Notice the little uh, division sign. It's US dollars per Aussie dollar. U.S. dollars per euro. The currency on the left is called the base currency, and that exponent of the base currency is always one. And the uh, exponent of the uh, variable currency, which is printed on the y-axis, the vertical axis of the graph, is what varies. So as the dollar gets stronger, say in the, out, in the event of a positive outcome of the jobs report, it's going to take less dollars to buy the singular Aussie or Euro or, or Sterling. So they go down, we sell them. And of course, vice versa for the dollars on the left. It costs more yen to buy the now stronger dollar, more Swissy, et cetera, et cetera. And I hope I haven't confused you too much. It's all inverted in a negative outcome. It's going to cost more dollars to buy the singular Aussies, hence these will go up, and vice versa. Less yen to buy the singular dollar because the dollar is weakened, and we buy, we sell dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar cash. Are there any questions about this, ladies and gentlemen? This is really a, a fundamental uh, piece of logic. I need you to have your heads around. Anybody? Okay, well, let's proceed. Oops, sorry. Uh, this is just from, uh, this is a shot from Forex uh, Factory. It's the same thing on on, uh, on investing.com or our site. It just gives you the uh, background, how it's constructed, who, who reads it, why it's important. This is a histogram of ups and downs, and it parallels, uh, this is the energy crisis of 1973, the 1980 energy crisis. The uh, this, of course, is the great financial crisis of 2007, and I and that's just how the histogram works. But I want to show you something specific in a moment once we get on. This is the trading platform. Again, notice a similar uh, rubric: dollars on the left, dollars on the right. You know, so again, this is all designed to keep from mis-executing. That's an important feature that I I, I want to avoid. Um, my mistake. This is a shot of here. We, we held these positions over the weekend. You can see 11.2, 11.5, and we still came out netting about $1,000 for positions that were held over the weekend. And as you know, those are expensive propositions. But if it goes well, and I don't promise, of course, anything of the sort, but sometimes, like last month, it was va, 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 voom. We did very well out of last month's trade. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's my practice to stay clearly and unequivocally. Um, 
that there is risk in this particular trading event as there are in all capital market activity, period. I say this not only because the regulations under which we as a firm and I as a registered security dealer operate obliges us to, but also as someone who has long experience in the capital markets, I well understand that particularly for beginners, the lure of fast and easy profits can quickly shatter on the rocks of market fickleness, and it does. Uh, these trade, The trades one enters into to exploit the non-farm payroll report have a high likelihood and that's fair. That's that's not an exaggeration. It's a high likelihood of uh, transpiring according to the expectation, meaning that the cause and effect between the outcome of the report and the market's reaction to that outcome are likely to occur in the way that one anticipates they will. However, they sometimes don't. That is the risk in all um, in capital market activity, the probability of the unexpected occurring. This is the very de definition of risk, and occur it does. So if you don't have the stomach to lose your capital, this is not the business for you. If, on the other hand, you're willing to have, if you have a, a, a reasonable appetite for risk, meaning that you have a reasonable willingness and preparedness to lose some of your hard-earned money, then you can do well in this business. But you have to know how to lose in order to win. By that, I mean simply how to minimize your losses. And uh, depending on how it goes, you'll see both ends of that spectrum today. Could see both ends of that spectrum. Now, the reason that we wait a few seconds uh, or more after the release of the report to enter the positions is precisely to witness the market's reaction. This is because so because, as I alluded to earlier, sometimes the market simply does not react in the expected way. There are no two ways about this. These are human beings participating in an entirely human undertaking, despite the 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 the, the NASA-like, you know, uh, cosmodrome-like pseudo-scientific representation of itself and its thinking. Uh, economics is a social science, not a natural science, despite the strenuous attempts by economists and financiers over the millennia, and I, this goes back to, to, well, goes back to ancient Greece, uh, to represent themselves and their thoughts as scientific, they are not. Science is deterministic. This means that what is understood to be a constant phenomenon in nature can be relied upon with certainty. Buildings can rest on these, these certainties. Civilizations can be built on that. Economics and finance are social sciences because they attempt to understand a human enterprise. Humans are emotional, irrational, erratic, and often do not act in their own economic interests, contrary to um, um, classical economics, which is oftentimes full of shit. It doesn't know what it's talking about. Therefore, there is a significant element of risk in their behaviors as individuals and their collective behaviors as a market, particularly for beginners. The experienced people who are in the room know this well. The market is not a genius. It's not the, the, the be-all and the end-all of wisdom and knowledge that economics purports it to be. No such thing. It doesn't exist. That's a load. Okay? The herding instinct, which is the most precise, unifying principle explaining the market's behavior, is what drives... That is market psychology. It's a follow on. It's a herding behavior. It's a mob mentality. I don't mean that in the violent way, but it's a it, it follows along. We we yeah, look at these. Look at these. If you've ever seen, you know, on nature shows or even witnessed in nature itself, the movement of large bodies of cattle or cattle on the hoof or or schooling fish even on, on the nature shows or, or, or flocking birds. You see that very few of these creatures are in a position to really observe or see what's ahead of them. So the rest of them have to follow signals and indications and, and movements about where to fly. Yet somehow they manage to do this in a in a in a uh, almost a, a mathematically choreographed way that is stunning in, in its beauty and its symmetry. Now the, the markets don't move in, a, in in as coordinated a way, but there's a follow-on effect. So we deal in a probabilistic world. All right, these are probabilistic tools we use. All those graphs and charts. Well, I'll explain it to you. It means that we can say that under certain circumstances, like the NFP report, we expect the market to behave a certain way with a certain probability. In other words, when X occurs eight out of 10 times, Y will happen. Will not happen 10 out of 10 times. Nor can we, we, sh can we be sure which of the 10 times will behave like the eight. Risk. It doesn't always have a familiar face, ladies and gentlemen. Any questions? All right, then let me let us go now to uh, let's take a look. We've got uh, about uh, 15 minutes in counting. Let's take a look at some of the things we, we want to look at. First of all, this is the actual economic. This is the uh, investing.com economic calendar. It's all the same in all the economic calendars. 
Um, and please feel free, ladies and gentlemen, you're a quiet crowd today, so feel free to ask questions. We see the non farm payrolls report is expecting 300,000. Last week and last month was 528,000. I'm going to digress here a little bit. Oh, and I want to show you this live um, histogram because it's deeply skewed. See this? This is, Mar this is March of. Um, is it? I can't see because way it's set up. Do we? I, yeah, this is March of. of well, it doesn't matter. I, I know it's it's that's the end. That's March that came out in April of 2020. 20 million jobs were lost. That is what 2,000 is. That's 20,699,000 jobs lost in one quarter. Devastating. Okay. So the recovery numbers are, are enormous compared to if we, here, I'll show you what I mean. If I move this data point out of the Oh, no, sorry, do it this way. Out of the screen, you see that these numbers seem huge. You know, they range from anywhere from 300,000, 350,000 to, 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 I don't know, 33,000. That's the usual number. Once we include this, all those numbers are be, become invisible. But if we um, only if we exclude, again, that giant data point, you see these numbers are enormous. Two months later, they gain nearly of uh, 4 million jobs. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 4 million jobs in one month. So you see that, that's why we, I want you to be aware in that histogram, you've got to not throw out that giant uh, data point from March uh, of 2020, but you've got to understand its influence on the past and on the future histogram. That, that's the only point. Is that clear to everybody? Okay, so expecting 300,000. Now here's what we're gonna do, and here's how we're gonna, uh, here's, here's how we deal with this. Um, oh, I didn't do one thing, and I'll I'll get to this in a moment. Um, let me see if I can do it right now. Oh, I'm not ready for that. Hmm. Well, I'll take a pause in a minute, and I'll set something up that I didn't, which, of course, is the most important. I don't have my trading platform ready, but I'll get to it in a minute. Now, the next thing we do is we have this set up on um, MT4. Now, this is... What I call, as you can see, I call it the NFP pairs uh, uh, profile. Is it a profile? I forget what it's called. Yeah, these are called profiles. Uh, MT4 is a, is, is a pretty good program, which we supply free to all our clients. And you can break up, and I have it broken up by a million different ways just to keep it all straight. Otherwise, it's not. These are, are these are here. Now, these are Aussie dollar, pound dollar, euro dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss dollar CAD on a one minute chart. Now, Please, can I get a recording, asks Mel. You bet. This is being recorded, Mel, and within, uh, I don't know, an hour or so after the session, you'll be sent a link to the recording. It takes a while to process the file. No audio. Mel, do you have audio now? It's a silly question if you don't, but I hope you do. Okay, anyway, what we do is... Um, I guess Mel doesn't have audio, it's not responding. Anyway, once the report comes out, we'll immediately flip to this screen and we'll see how the market reacts. This is how we decide what to trade, not what the report comes out at. The report can come out, blah, 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 boom, and we'll go to this, the platform, immediately enter our positions, and suddenly we're losing money, hand over fist. That happens. We don't want that to happen. So we go, we look at this screen, and we determine what the market's actually doing in response to the, to the release. And then we trade along with what the market response is. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Let me just check to make sure audio is okay. I, people would have complained if they didn't. Yeah, the audio seems to be coming through just fine. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pause just for a moment, ladies and gentlemen, if you, uh, if you will pardon me. And I'm going to just set up uh, the trading platform. I don't know what happened to it. I, I just or something but, uh... thank you kate just give me a moment here
Here we go. Okay. Okay. All righty. So far, so good. All right, I think I'm ready to Okay, I think we're back in business. All right, now this, ladies and gentlemen, is the trading platform. No, and these are this is my favorite. This is the my favorites, which I again not perfectly, but no. How come it doesn't show? Oh, I put the blonde one on. Okay, so I've got the actually. Let me get rid of this if I can. I want the euro bond one there. That'll take it out, I believe. There we go, and it does. Okay, so the pound dollar, uh, dollar. Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar CAD. Not exactly the order I want, but that's for technical reasons. Uh, eight contrasts, same approach with other major news revolving around euro, euro dollar, and other major currencies. No, absolutely not, econch. This is a unique phenomena. I do not recommend this, at least in my experience. I mean, others may have developed uh, a way to respond to, I don't know, uh, European CPI, central banks, I don't know. I, I don't know. And that's my answer. I don't know. I can tell you guys that I'm not aware of any other event being so widely followed and traded like this one is. So my guess is no. So when it when, when we get this, when we get the idea from this screen. We see what's going on. We see we get something, some confirmation of where things are moving. We move to the trading platform, and away we go. Okay, so that's how we're going to do it. Uh, we've got T minus seven minutes and counting. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Six minutes, I guess, according to the. Uh, any questions? Now. I am going to hold your hand as we go. We'll, 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 do I trade gold in a general way? I haven't traded gold in years for the because um, gold hasn't done anything in, in so long, and I, I've avoided it. And I'll tell you the truth: even before the last the pandemic, I was a terrible gold trader. I, I don't like gold. I'm much better at silver. I've made much, much more money over the decades. By the way, I, when I didn't introduce myself at the beginning, I'm 65 years old now. I've been trading for 52 years. In the capital markets, I started as a very young man, and um, I, I started my professional career on Wall Street in the early 80s with an outfit called Bankers Trust Company, and I've worked for two, uh, uh, three, I should say, including Bankers Trust, three major uh, global uh, finance houses in my career. Um, I was never a good gold trader, so I, I don't trade gold, but the fact is I don't find this much to do with gold anymore at all these days. Uh, even despite the running runaway inflation, not runaway, but it's powerful inflation. It seems that a lot of inflation hedging is run to uh, crypto. I'm not sure about that. That's my gut instinct. But if you're asking for a D, if I trade gold with respect to this event, no. Um, oh, yes, I'll hold your hand through this. We'll walk through. Do we use any stop loss? Did you, I always use stop loss when I trade. I don't use it in this event because there's, there is huge volatility here. Thank you for mentioning that, Bijou. I, I, I want, let me uh, digress a moment on the volatility issue. If you set stop losses on this trade, you're going to have to set them so far away from the entry point um, so that you're not stopped out uh, uh, because of the noise, because there's a tremendous amount of noise. That I don't use stop losses. However, in the event that I don't use stop losses, I watch these positions like a goddamn hawk. Okay, I don't take my eyes off of them. I don't let them run. I don't get go out and get myself a coffee. I am on them with my finger on the on the on the uh, buy sell button. So the answer is no, but with a lot of caution because of the volatility. It's too 
I mean, I could set them, but it would be they, they would be practically useless. They'd be so far away. Do it. If I made myself clear to you, but Bijou. Okay, we're well, T-minus four minutes and counting. Now, let me just spend a minute or two talking about this phenomenon. We've heard a lot about this. Um, you know, is, is, is a good jobs number good for the economy, bad for the stock market, the interest rates? I'll, get, I'll make this as simple and clear as I can. If this comes out strong again, which I, I, I really doubt that it's going to come out, another 400, 300, 500,000 jobs, that means the economy is running hot. That means that wage demands are going to arise. That means that the Fed is going to keep have to keep its foot firmly planted on the brakes, i.e., raising the interest rates to keep uh, to keep rates low, uh, to keep inflation under control, and it's going to be therefore bad for the stock market because as those interest rates rise, stock markets de uh, uh, prices decline. I won't go into the reason for that, but that's the basic calculation. If, on the other hand, uh, these numbers come out weak. It's going to be a sign that the uh, the central bank's policy is 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 on target, and that the markets might be able to say, well, that means that uh, a, a decline or in the in the increasing rate of interest rates is in the in the cards, and the stock markets may be encouraged by that. It's perverse logic because it's perverse logic. Okay, so I don't really subscribe to it, but that's the common wisdom in such matters. Um, it can't just and how should we manage risk in such a volatile market? We're not talking about a volatile market, Econch. We're talking about a volatile trade, okay? In volatile markets, you do indeed use stop losses. But um, this is not a, a, a market-wide situation. It's a live trading event. It's different. It's not saying like, well, the, the natural gas market is very volatile, and so I have to have my stops in place. You do. I, I do. I have lots of gas positions, and then they all stop. They all, they all have uh, uh, stop losses in place. This is not the same. By all means, Bijou, ask away. We have, according to about two minutes to go. Akon, did I answer your question, sir? T minus one minute and counting. Good. This is, by the way, the longest minute in the month. It seems to just forever take forever after open the session how much time do we wait to open the trade impossible for me to answer bijou but stay tuned you'll see you'll see damn quickly sometimes a matter of seconds sometimes by the way i open it and nothing happens but you'll see all right so a t minus one minute and counting under a minute we're expecting 300 we'll go from here immediately to the uh to the uh screens to look at the market reactions on all the six currencies and if it looks good we looks like there's opportunities we will go to the trading platform and execute okay we're under a minute we're looking for 300 anything in the 300 range should be good for dollar strength not necessarily so i don't think it's going to be that much above 300 i think it's going to be at or a little less but again, we don't care what I think or what's, what we think is going to happen. We just wait to see what is going to happen. If you look at the uh, charts now, by the way, you'll see all sorts of nervous activity. It's the rookies and the uh, new, newbies and the wannabes thinking they can outsmart the market, taking positions ahead of the release. This is absurd. We don't follow them. They invariably lose money. We don't care what they do. We wait till we see what the market happens after the release. See what I mean about the longest minute? Just seems to take forever. All right, here we go. 315, close enough. All right, that's good. Um, okay, notice the big spike and then, ha 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 Wow, okay, see what I mean. Here's your answer, Bijou. A huge spike. If you can, nobody, I mean, nobody can get in and out that fast. So that, there's nothing there for us. Now, the dollar yen looks like it's, the dollar yen has been very good during these uh, trades, by the way. But note the other ones. They they had a huge spike and promptly died. Same with the dollar yen. Ain't nothing here for me to get into, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing. Oh. 
Ozzy Dollar looks like it's got some life, but nah. Look at the length of those tails. Tails tells you everything. Yeah, that's what it tells you. Nothing with nothing equals nothing. The Billy Preston song from the 1970s. Pound Dollar, Ozzy Dollar, looking good. Okay, they're starting to take some life to them. They're starting to get life into them. Aussie dollar, pound dollar, euro dollar, all looking good. Giving it back. I'm not getting in just yet. Aussie dollar is nothing right now. They're all giving it back. No, 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 no. I don't see a damn thing here, folks. Although the euro dollar is looking really good. They pop back. Jesus, they're fast. You see what I mean by this? If you follow these things and follow them, you're going to lose money. You buy, you can't react fast enough. And as soon as you get in on these, these big spikes, they, they take the money away. This is choppy waters, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome, Bijou. Okay, some of them, I don't know. This is too much for my sensitive stomach. The dollar cat is the only thing that's looking well done. Jesus Christ. I don't know. None of this looks good to me. Anybody making any money out of this? People with larger balls than I have. I don't like the looks of any of this. Anybody? Dollar yen is probably your best trade here. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go take a dollar yen and a dollar cad trade. How do you like that? See if any of this is any by me. Dollar yen, dollar cad. I'm going to get in. Not big positions, though, I promise. Find the damn thing here. Where is it? Here we go. Let's get into all the yen dollar cad. Do now we're going to fool around like this. Let's just make sure nothing's changed in the meantime. Yeah, it has changed. Only thing is good is dollar cad. All right, I'll give it the dollar cad short. Dollar cad bottles. Do I want to sell dollar cad? No, I want to buy dollar cad. I want to make sure I'm not screwing this up. See what I mean? Dollar cad is sell. That's right. I'm selling dollar cad. Well, that's a pretty. That's not such a big position. Okay, I'm going to sell and stay with that. That's enough for me. Yeah, as soon as I got in, it reversed. That's where I got in the dashed line. Anybody else doing anything here? Side losing money like me? Come on, come on. Now it's starting to look bad. Get a little more rope. I'm not going to stick around in this position too long. I don't like the looks of it. I don't like the looks of it at all.
Anybody else doing anything here? We'll give it a few more seconds. I'm getting the hell out of this position. It's not doing me any good. No, it's going down. That don't look good. Okay. All right, that's it. I'm out. I'm not playing around with this anymore. I'm not playing around with it anymore. Now watch it'll make tons of money. I think we're done. I just don't see anything happening here, ladies and gentlemen. There's not much of a trade. There's not much anything. USD one sixty five dollars. Says Pichu. Very nice. Very nice. I got out with a twenty dollar loss. I'm happy with that too. Um yeah, I don't. I, I do know what to say, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of those events where there wasn't much happening. It came out more or less as expected. A few of you made a few dollars, and I'm proud of you for that. I hope nobody lost anything big. Um, pound dollar seems to be moving nicely, although it doesn't take much to weaken the pound. Um, but I think the trading is over for us for the day. That's what it looks like to me. Anybody else? A couple of pieces of business, ladies and gentlemen. Um, our next session is next Thursday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, we're going to talk about the coming uh, Euroland energy crisis. This is big news, big and sad news. It ain't pretty, but there are some unbelievable trading opportunities here. Oh, look, the dollar cat is, gonna, is making plenty of money now. On rising volume, I might add. All of these are on rising volume. Hmm. Hmm. I should have stayed in that position, but I don't know. Fooling around, not not enough for me. And I had a big position there. I had a I had a two lot position, so I, 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 that's the kind of movement I'm making on two lots again. Um, what else? Oh yes, there's a small poll here. I'd like you to fill out on your uh, um, dashboard. Fill that out. Answer some questions in the survey in the end. That helps us plan for you. Let me just say that those of you who are attending today, uh, who aren't members, of, who aren't clients of the house. We're looking for an online brokerage. Please consider opening an account with us. Today's session is an example of the quality work we produce. We're not right all the time. We don't pretend to be right all the time, but we do make more money than we lose over the long run, and that is the sine qua non of of, uh, of success in this business. Because everybody loses. Don't, don't believe anybody who touches it. They don't lose. They're lying to you. They don't trade or they're full of shit. So we everybody loses, and you got to learn how to turn a loss into a gain. By that I mean learn from your loss to how to and we do sessions on that subject now and then. Um, but this is the kind of work we produce, signals and ebooks and and, and, and notes and, and letters and all sorts of uh, valuable, we consider valuable work that we share with our clients. And so consider opening an account with us. Um, and so, ladies and gentlemen, let me say that on behalf of the staff and the management here at Alvexo, uh, we're always gratified and humbled by your continued patronage of us as your online broker and um and therefore uh, let me say uh uh thank you all for attending and we wish you all ladies and gentlemen the ability to trade with confidence bye bye for now <laughs>